kind of a ominous looking sky and you can see the rain coming down starting to get into that season cold weather bear clinic systems and cold air outbreaks let's take a look at that surface map we do have a little bit of a mix though up to the north winter weather system in western north dakota and down to the south the remnants of tropical storm pamela crossing the sierra madres now that storm is taking a track to the northeast so it's going to be in texas by tonight and it will be on its way moving towards the midwest and we're gonna take a look at that in just a little bit Frontal system extending through Texas, and we've got that triple point there south of Des Moines. Warm front helping to produce some showers and maybe a few storms around the Chicago area. And out to the west, vast amount of cold air. The 543 decameter line coming all the way into Oregon and Montana. And it's a cool afternoon at places like Las Vegas with 60 and Phoenix with 69. There's the weather picture in the North Pacific and Alaska. You're going to notice something a little bit different. I've introduced the 540 threshold right there. That's the transition between red and the bluer colors. That tends to mark the transition zone between wintry precipitation forms and rain. It's not really a hard and fast rule, but it's a good guide to how cold your air mass is. So up in this region, the air mass can support wintry weather. However, there's probably just a little bit too much warm air in the vertical column. Up to the north, not particularly cold. Some cold air lurking up there in the Arctic. And in eastern Canada, some cold air coming down through the Hudson Bay region that looks to be mostly headed for Quebec and Labrador behind this occluded system that's in the Labrador Sea. And there's a better look at that. You can see Thule Air Base right up there with 32 degrees at this hour. And down to the south, some very heavy snow. I did want to draw your attention to Iceland. We normally don't look at that. That's way up here. They've had a pretty strong cold air outbreak come through there. Winds are out of the north. Temperatures are in the 30s and 40s, but you can see there is cold air on its way south, and that can be indicative of a weather change starting in Scotland, Ireland, England. So maybe some changes there coming up this week. In fact, why don't we just take a look at that? There's our weather system there coming out of Iceland. The front's looking something like that, and you can see that warm southwesterly flow out ahead of it. But as we go into Thursday and Friday, there's that cold blast coming towards the Scotland coast and moving through the country. It's got kind of a northerly track there, so not really heading much into France or Italy, but that's one of many systems that we're going to be seeing over the next few weeks. And this is that time of year when the Atlantic gets very stormy. The Great Storm of 1987, the strongest storm to hit England in modern times, was around this time of the year. The Atlantic bears watching. A lot of potential change. And even in the U.S., we have to deal with that as well because there's a very strong system over the Great Plains and also the Great Lakes, they have a lot of heat. And just about three weeks down the line, that's when we can get those very powerful storms on Lake Superior. The Edmund Fitzgerald went down in one of those very strong autumn storms. Well, let's see how our temperature records are stacking up. These are the highs for today, the official forecast highs. The only one that I'm seeing is up there in Caribou, Maine. 74 there, breaking the record of 73, set in 1943. And these readings down to the south, those are coming close to records, but not breaking them. There's the combined temperatures for tomorrow. These are maxes and minimums. Jackson, expecting to break the record there in Kentucky, 83. Meanwhile, coming close to record lows in parts of the Great Basin and the Mojave Desert. 17 at Ely, 
That's a definite hard freeze. And Salt Lake City coming down to freezing tomorrow morning. Now, this is also for tomorrow, but this is a rather unusual plot. Let me divide this into two areas. Out east, we're looking at overnight low temperatures, but these are very warm overnight lows. And where you see the colors, the reds, those are breaking the overnight minimum records for the date in terms of hot weather. So Indiana, they've never had an overnight low that warm, 66 degrees there. Meanwhile, out west, these are afternoon maximums that are unusually cool. And those are breaking records in Idaho. So that is firmly where the cold air mass is. 42 at Pocatello there, breaking the record set in 1966. And Salt Lake City only coming up to 44. So I, I like this chart because it's a very good visualization of where the air masses are. So we're clearly dealing with a lot of tropical air flowing north and some cool Pacific air coming down into the Great Basin region. So let's look at the 300 millibar chart for North America. A couple of interesting factors here. Very strong jet out there in the Pacific and a very clear long wave trough across the western U.S. associated with that cold weather. As we start out, it looks like the pattern is progressive at first glance. You can see the troughs moving towards the east there. But it looks like the overall long wave pattern may be slowing down or retrogressing a bit. Because if we go further, well, first of all, you can see a very high amplitude pattern here. And when we get those high amplitude patterns, we tend to shear off vortices. And there's an example right there, vortex shearing off over Quebec and yet another one in the Great Basin area. So by the time we get up to next week, we've got three vortices spinning around in the eastern U.S. and Canada. And quite often, that will tend to lock up the long wave pattern. And it sure seems to be that way with that long wave trough off the West Coast. So it's continuing stormy there in British Columbia, Washington, and Oregon. Another system coming onshore. And we're kind of looking at a stormy pattern there. Meanwhile, those vortices have condensed across the Great Lakes on the 25th. Of course, that's getting into crystal ball territory. But it does look like a continuation of the stormy weather in the western U.S. with changeable, hard-to-predict weather in the east U.S. And I say that because of those cutoff lows. If we did not have those, they would probably be under a ridge with above-average temperatures. So kind of a mixed bag of different weather systems here coming up over the next two weeks. Hurricane season starting to wind down. We're probably just about done with the Cat 4 and Cat 5 systems. We can still have hurricanes into November, but uh, it is looking kind of quiet there, that one disturbance. North of Dominica, the five-day outlook, bringing that system northeast. Now, we do have Pamela crossing the mountains of Mexico there. 40 knots on that, 999 millibars, and the track... Looks like they're not forecasting that beyond this evening. I guess they're about to shut that down. But that is going to be coming up into Texas. We can try to find that on the precipitable water chart. Starting out here, it's not very definite, the location, but it looks like something emerges maybe around 9 p.m. tonight around Del Rio, San Antonio. And whatever it is, moves eastward towards College Station, Victoria, by tomorrow morning, and just losing definition. The reason there's not a really definite center on that is because the system is sheared apart, the lower levels kind of back here, and the upper levels being carried by the prevailing westerlies. So it's being kind of torn in the vertical. The wind charts can sometimes be helpful. This is wind and relative humidity. And it does look like there's a little bit of a 
vorticity center there around Del Rio around 4 p.m. And that appears to move right there around San Antonio around midnight and out towards East Texas by about nine o'clock. This is probably the best chart I can find for locating that system. So that appears to be right about there, about 9 a.m. And I don't know where it is after that. I guess you, you know, an 850 millibar vorticity chart would be very helpful. That's what I would turn to. And I don't think any of those are online. You would have to use a tool like WindGrids to locate that. And let's start putting it together because everybody wants to know what's happening in their part of the country. We're going to look at air masses using the 850 millibar temperature anomaly. This is up at about 5,000 feet to a certain extent. It eliminates diurnal effects. We can clearly see where the warm air is. It's out in the eastern half of the U.S. And lots of cold air centered in the Great Basin area. That's close to where we saw the core on those record temperature charts. The cold front, very easy to find, kind of in there. And you're going to notice that the tropical storm will make an appearance as we roll this forward. And you're going to see a temperature anomaly, kind of cool. It's kind of a whitish shade coming out tonight. And there it is. Yeah, that's actually it right there. Coming across East Texas early tomorrow morning. That's going to be associated with some of the evaporative cooling starting to kick in as it crosses through that transitional air mass. And it looks like it's pretty much gone by evening. After that, I'm not really sure where it is. That cold air being wicked away to the east into the Dakotas not making much progress to the south, and continued very warm out in the eastern U.S. For tomorrow night, we can see a lot of residual cold air in the valleys of the Rockies. We're still modifying that. The ground temperature's remaining a little bit warm, so we're going to be converting the cold air into kind of a cool air mass, and eventually... It'll be gone maybe by the weekend. Looks like another push of cold air coming in. Yeah, that actually looks like it starts to kick out into the plains by Friday. And there it is heading into the southeastern U.S. So we finally dislodged some of it, but you can see temperatures are coming back up in the Rockies, except in the higher valleys where some cold air is hanging on. Then by Sunday and Monday, looks like downslope in Alberta, Saskatchewan, Man Manitoba, and the Dakotas, and more cold air coming into California. That's the next system for Monday. Spreading eastward on Tuesday and Wednesday. Some downslope in the Rockies by Tuesday. And then going into midweek, System emerges east of the Rockies. That's it right there. Some cold air coming in its wake. And you can see not much residual cold air being left behind. And that's probably about as far as I want to go with that. So let's put it together a little bit further. There's a strong system in the Dakotas there that's going to head up to the northeast because we have southwesterly flow bringing it up into Canada like that. Some thermal troughing out there in the eastern, or I should say western U.S. You can see the depressed thicknesses there. And then going forward, these look like the remnants of Pamela coming up into Arkansas tomorrow during the day and spreading up into Illinois by evening. So I would say that's probably it right there. Frontal system up there in the Great Plains, about like that. That's going to be fixing to come down by Friday during the day. There it goes. Cold front coming south, dri driven by a 1033 millibar high. And 540 decameter thicknesses coming into the Dakotas, so very cool air. 
MCS spreading into the Mississippi River Valley during the day on Friday into Friday night. And then just kind of a cool, delightful fall day, I guess you would say, for the weekend. And here comes our next system from the Pacific into California for Monday and Tuesday. More snow for the Great Basin region. And I would say that's probably a good stopping point. I want to thank our newest Patreon supporter, Shanika Johnson. Thank you for helping to support the program. And thanks to people like Keith Brandt, Ron Chalfant, Tom Horn, Philip Slack, and William Oosterman. People like you help to keep this program alive and well. Hope you all have a great Wednesday evening. And we'll see you again on Friday. Have a good one. Bye-bye.